Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. It's the early morning after the Pacquiao-Bradley rematch. The first fight, I had Timothy Bradley winning that fight. This fight, I believe Manny Pacquiao won this fight, but I do believe that it was a lot closer than the scorecards suggested. The best summary I have found online of the fight, the summary that to me is spot on in terms of what I saw, is an article by Rick Reno, spelled R-E-E-N-O. It's on BoxingScene.com. The name of the title is Pacquiao Gets Revenge, Decisions Bradley for WBO Belt. Right? Let me just read a couple of paragraphs of this and you'll get a feel for it. Right? Reno writes, They felt each other out in the first. The speed and defensive skills of both fighters were on display from the opening bell. The second round was another story. Pacquiao was able to sting Bradley with the left hand and then both fighters started slugging away in a brawl. Pacquiao got the better of the exchanges. The third was more of the same, the leather was flying and they were taking punches, giving punches, and there was little to hold to no holding. Bradley got the better of the fourth with hard counters connecting to Pacquiao's head, including a shot that shook up Pacquiao's legs. After a bad start in the fifth, Bradley closed it strong with punches to the head. The sixth was close with both fighters having their moments. In the seventh, Bradley appeared to be winning until the final minute. On and on and on. Okay, I thought the fight hung in the balance until the later rounds when I thought Bradley wilted a bit. Now, let me just preface the comments I'm about to make because I know at this stage uh, they're going to sound controversial in this context. Just understand that I'm a big believer that perfection is elusive. That styles make fights. That even the very best fighters ever need to be analyzed. Here online when I critique some fights and I'll say some lines about some excellent future Hall of Fame boxers, I'll get comments. Why do you hate this guy? What do you have against our people, right? You know, what do you have against British boxers? I've heard that one. Filipino boxers, Mexican boxers, American boxers, West Coast boxers, right? Boxing is much more passionate than team sports, right? In team sports, you're just rooting for a guy who happened to be drafted or who happened to sign with your team. In boxing, these guys are literally social and cultural icons, right? Manny Pacquiao, to many Filipinos, is an icon. Just like Floyd Mayweather, to many African Americans, is an icon. You start dissecting and talking about an individual fighter, and people feel that you're talking about their culture, their part of the world. Right? I was raised in a house where certain fighters were off the table in terms of analysis. Right? My father, God bless him, great guy, rest in peace, loved Joe Lewis. Right? Lewis is well before my time, but he was in my father's time. And you could not talk negatively about Joe Lewis. And expect not to get some hard looks, right? My father loved Muhammad Ali. You could not talk hard about Muhammad Ali without getting some hard looks. 
But let's be real here, right? Let's analyze. Even great fighters. Joe Lewis had slow feet, didn't he? Isn't Billy Kahn circling him? In today's heavyweight division, against, let's say, a mover, some guy like an Ali who could move in the ring, wouldn't Joe Lewis have a hard time keeping up? Rocky Marciano. How could you look at the balance problems that Marciano had in the first Jersey Joe Walcott fight? He's dominated in that fight. Dominated. Round after round by Walcott, one of boxing's better figures, right? Walcott, quite frankly, beat Lewis, got jobbed, one of the worst decisions in boxing history. He's beating up on Rocky Marciano. Aren't Lewis and Marciano two of the guys who are exalted in the sport? Marciano takes Walcott's title, right, with a KO late. Knockouts cause amnesia. But let's just say Marciano, in my opinion, didn't have the best balance in the world, didn't have the best footwork in the world, right? Was unorthodox to the point where I believe someone could prepare for him. Marciano officially retired unbeaten. Ali didn't go to the body, right? Ali, like Vladimir Klitschko right now, was predominantly a head hunter, right? Joe Fraser, we now have proof, was blind in one eye for much of his career. So you could imagine how a jabber with accuracy could target his other eye to give him problems. <clears throat> now I mention this because <clears throat> after watching yesterday's fight, Manny Pacquiao, who I do believe, is an obvious Hall of Famer who has always had some of the fastest hands I have ever seen. Right? Who, quite frankly, in his prime, and he's past his prime now, had some of the fastest feet I've ever seen. Right? Manny Pacquiao, really, to me, the best part of Pacquiao's game was his ability to move around the ring. Right? But, understand, the holes that I saw in Pacquiao's game before this Bradley rematch remain. Right? You can be an excellent fighter and have holes in your game. Right? As I said, show me the Joe Lewis fight where Joe Lewis is moving quickly around the ring. You're not going to see it, right? Manny Pacquiao right now is fighting <clears throat> a battle he's eventually going to lose to Father Time. If you believe that Pacquiao turned back the clock yesterday, if you believe that Pacquiao was vintage Pacquiao, then I would encourage you to look at the copy box numbers for the fight. Right? Understand Manny Pacquiao's volume was significantly dampened yet again. Prime Pacquiao could throw over a thousand punches in a round. Al Bernstein, someone I follow, really a guy who knows the sport of boxing as well as anyone, used to believe, might still believe, that Manny Pacquiao's volume would be too much for Floyd Mayweather. Such was Pacquiao's volume. Understand yesterday, in a fight in which Pacquiao got his revenge, right, a make or break fight from a career standpoint, right, you win, you're the welterweight champion. You lose, it's the second official loss to the guy who currently would be holding the belt. According to CompuBox, Manny Pacquiao threw 563 punches yesterday. 
right? If you want statistical proof that Manny Pacquiao is in decline, look at the copy box numbers. You can actually find a printout of them at www.philstar.com slash sports. Let's talk about the fight itself. Okay? Uh, by the way, they have a photo of the final CompuBox stats um, that's taken from BoxioMundial.com's Twitter. And what it does is it shows you that this is the second straight fight where Bradley threw more punches than Pacquiao, but Pacquiao landed more punches than Bradley. Okay, now let me just say, the first round is by far the most interesting round of the fight from my perspective. Right? Joel Diaz does a masterful job with Timothy Bradley in coming up with a game plan. It's a breathtaking strategy. Right? Timothy Bradley comes out and he, in addition to throwing a jab like he did the first fight, to keep Manny Pacquiao off of him, right? They've added a Alexander Povetkin versus Marco Hawk vertical dynamic to what they're doing. It's as if Diaz and Bradley have decided that Manny Pacquiao can't throw those great hard left hands from distance low. Right? So you'll actually see it's a breathtaking strategy. You'll actually see Timothy Bradley come in and he's ducking. Right? He's ducking lower than he did in the first fight. They obviously broke down film of Manny Pacquiao. You'll also notice too that Manny Pacquiao and I don't care what CompuBox says here. Manny Pacquiao can't land a stiff jab on Timothy Bradley. He can't. As I've said, from distance, this hasn't changed. I saw nothing last night to contradict this. From distance, Manny Pacquiao can land a nice straight left hand. It's the number one weapon in his arsenal. His right hand from distance isn't that good. An elite fighter doesn't have to worry about that right hand from distance too much. What Bradley and Diaz, by strategy, were telling you yesterday is that you don't even have to worry about the left hand low. Right? That left hand is predominantly effective up top. It's just like a Marco Huck right hand. Right? Up top, it's deadly. But you can duck under the danger zone. Not that it won't hurt you, but you can duck under it. Style-wise, a fight I'd like to see. Might not be possible, but let's keep in mind, Pacquiao weighed 151 pounds when the fight started. Right? Would be Pacquiao against Sergio Martinez the middleweight king. Understand Marqui Martinez can fight low. He bends at the waist. He's also a southpaw just like Pacquiao so you would have different angles here. The point is simply in breaking down Manny Pacquiao you have to ask yourself what money punches can he throw from distance? right? If he's predominantly one-handed from distance, and if that one hand doesn't have as much coverage as, let's say, the other skills of other elite fighters, then understand there are opportunities for a world-class opponent to exploit.
Let me point out too, Bradley later in the fight, and I thought Bradley fought a poor fight. Bradley later in the fight drops his hands. Now that's a tip off to the fact that even with dropped hands, I'm talking about drops his hands, folks, against Manny Pacquiao, even with dropped hands, Bradley did not get hit flush in those exchanges. He drops his hands, Pacquiao comes in, Bradley understood that at certain angles, Pacquiao could only throw certain punches, right? Pacquiao, simply put, is too left-hand dominant. His game relies on speed and an element of surprise, right? He's not a technician up close. I'll just put it to you this way. In terms of effective hand speed and accuracy, if we're talking about fighters in history, I honestly could not imagine, could not imagine a guy dropping his hands like that against, let's say, a Roy Jones Jr. in his prime or a Salvador Sanchez and expecting to come out as unscathed as Bradley does right now Bradley starts to fight well what Bradley needed to do in my opinion was to keep the fight structured why would you brawl with Manny Pacquiao especially when Pacquiao is that left hand dominant right wouldn't you want to keep the fight structure so that Manny Pacquiao could only throw that left hand when you wanted him to. Let me point out too in the first round Timothy Bradley is actually able to land long straight right hands. It's breathtaking because understand Bradley's right hand lined up with Pacquiao's left. Now that's a tip off to the fact that Bradley's reading tells on Manny Pacquiao that tell him when he can throw that right hand without being countered. Because understand with regard to the fight, if he times the right hand wrong and leaves himself open to Manny Pacquiao's left hand, that would have been fatal, right? Pacquiao's left hand is the same left hand that drilled Juan Manuel Marquez several times in the first round of their first fight. One of the points I've been making here online is that the more you see Manny Pacquiao, the more you can figure out how to get around that left hand. Manny Pacquiao is better the first time around. The second time around you can dampen his punch output to where it was here. Right? Again, according to CompuBox, Pacquiao throws 563 punches. Right? I would encourage everyone to try to find another Pacquiao fight that went 12 rounds where Manny Pacquiao threw so few punches. Now, after a great first round, and I have to be blunt with you, I was out in a bar, right, surrounded by a predominantly Pacquiao crowd. How much so? I believe it was only me and one other brother in that place, uh, Hooters in Campbell, California, great spot to watch a fight. There's only one other dude in a place of at least 150 people who was rooting for Timothy Bradley. One other guy, right? The crowd was diverse, right? Black, 
white, Latino, Asian. There was only one other guy in the place rooting for Timothy Bradley. I don't care about pay-per-view numbers. Right? I don't care about respect that a fighter receives. I believe Floyd Mayweather is respected. Right? It's rare when you see a fighter who's loved. Right? And I'm just here to say, I've said it before in uh, multiple videos. You know, Manny Pacquiao is loved. Right? Maybe he's had some fights that haven't done well pay-per-view. The Rios fight, I understand, wasn't a fight that did well on pay-per-view. Right? Maybe the public understands that Manny Pacquiao has holes in his game, that that right jab isn't that good, right? That if a chess player comes up on him and can neutralize a long right hand, it's not even a great right hand up close, then, excuse me, uh, left hand, then that guy could do the kind of damage Juan Manuel Marquez could do, right? But understand, while people know that a Marquez might be a much better technician. When the public loves a guy, they'll overlook the flaws. In fact, they'll know of the flaws, but they'll root for their guy anyway. Right? Try talking to someone about the body punches Ray Leonard took against Marvin Hagler in their big fight. Right? The Ray crowd is so proud that Ray came back and went for it. People need to understand that when the public falls in love with the fighter, it's all roses. Right? The Ali people, they know Leon Spinks only had seven pro fights when he beat Ali. Think about it. They know that. They were back. House was packed for the Ali Spinks rematch. You would have thought that Leon Spinks was an accomplished fighter. It's even worse than that. They were back for the Larry Holmes Muhammad Ali fight. Think about that. Holmes was a dominant champ, unbeaten. The Ali people were there hoping for a miracle, right? The defects, the fact that Larry Holmes probably had a better jab than Ali. Let's be real here. As good as Ali's jab was, right? The defects overlooked. Well, my point is Manny Pacquiao, early in this fight, couldn't match the foot speed of Timothy Bradley. Understand a guy who wants to move with Manny Pacquiao right now can. So we get to the second round. If you believe the Bradley corner, Bradley tore his calf in the first round. Right? That's the story. Now, let's just say this. Whatever happened, you get to the second round and I blame Bradley. Even with the torn calf, why are you trying to knock out Manny Pacquiao? Why turn a structured event in which you even have his left hand timed, in which you're ducking away from punches, why turn that into a brawl? Why swing for the fences that early? Why not force Pacquiao to walk into punches just like Juan Manuel Marquez did. Right? So, let's just say that I thought the fight gets away from Bradley early. It's a competitive fight. Another thing I couldn't understand, and Smelodies, a viewer here online, pointed it out to me before the fight, was how Bradley's even getting hit with Manny Pacquiao's left hand. If you know a guy is left hand dominant, how are you even in the area code to get hit 
with the punch. Right? So, a boxing match descends into a brawl. The key points of the fight I want you to consider. Because I'm sure this fight's going to be shown several times. Is simply, how is Bradley able to land straight right hands early? Why isn't Pacquiao able to get more volume? Why is Pacquiao so inaccurate when Bradley drops both hands? There's a moment in this fight where Bradley's up on the ropes and Pacquiao comes over to the ropes, throws a bunch of punches. People in the bar where I saw the fight got up on their feet. They were screaming. Why did so few of those punches land? Why couldn't Pacquiao when Bradley backs up against the ropes do more damage? Right? Bradley doesn't do much when he's up against the ropes. He's not one Manuel Marquez in terms of setting traps. He didn't look like he had a specific punch in mind. That rope sequence, and it happens a few times in this fight. When Bradley's up on the ropes, the rope sequence is important. Because if Pacquiao can't do more than he did when he ran over to the ropes, then you have to wonder exactly what happens if he fights Marquez again or if he fights Floyd Mayweather. Right? So, let me just say this, too. The foot speed. When's the last time you saw a fight? where an opponent seemed to match Pacquiao in foot speed like Bradley did early in this fight. Also there is a moment in the fight where Pacquiao connects on a right hook from outside Timothy Bradley. There is. It's early too. Right? How many other strong right hands from distance in this fight does Manny Pacquiao connect on? Right? Also, how is Bradley able to, and now it's been over 24 rounds, throw more punches than Manny Pacquiao? Why are the CompuBox numbers for this fight much closer than the CompuBox numbers from the Pacquiao-Bradley 2012 fight? Right? Finally, if Bradley's calf was torn in the first round. If, as Max Kellerman suspected in the post-fight interview, some dynamic changed in this fight as the fight went forward. In other words, we went from a structured boxing match to a brawl. Right? That's literally how it went right then again why is this yet another fight in which Manny Pacquiao couldn't stop his opponent right neither guy is close to hitting the canvas even once right the first fight Bradley has two sprained ankles the second fight clearly Bradley swinging for the fences after starting the fight structure. In other words, I would say the second and third rounds I thought were Pacquiao rounds. Right? But it's clear during those rounds that Timothy Bradley is trying desperately to stop Manny Pacquiao. He's swinging for the fences. Right? It's, it's more an attempt at power punching than it is an attempt at boxing. Given that kind of brawl, free-for-all, where's the last time, when's the last time you saw Manny Pacquiao in a brawl where the other guy never hits the canvas? Right? This is not the first fight. The first fight, the guys are relatively well-behaved. The first fight is more of a boxing match. 
this fight at times is more of a brawl right have we reached the point of Pacquiao's career where there can be a brawl and he still gets off less than 600 punches and the other guy doesn't hit the canvas are you concerned about the fact that this is at least the sixth fight in a row where Pacquiao has not gotten a stoppage to sum up I thought Pacquiao won the fight um, I thought 12th rounds a draw I thought Pacquiao looked good put it this way for me the fight hung in the balance going into the 10th round I thought Pacquiao closed well right I thought Pacquiao did what he had to do to win the fight right but I still believe that Pacquiao right has decreasing volume can be hit is too reliant on a straight left hand from distance up top that can be defensed from by an elite fighter Pacquiao doesn't fight with his back up against the ropes right when the other guy has his back up on the ropes and Manny comes forward because Manny is so one-handed defensive wizards can actually defend against the attacks Marquez Bradley right let me hear from you tell me how Pacquiao dominated this fight if you believe he dominated the fight tell us why you feel the copy box numbers are accurate or inaccurate tell us if you believe that the Timothy Bradley torn calf story is a real story or a cover story what changed the dynamic of this fight from round one to let's say rounds three four five and six right also is there a moment in this fight I thought Harold Letterman's scorecard was ridiculous I believe he gives Bradley one round after the fifth round is there a moment in this fight where you believe either of these fighters strings together four consecutive rounds or something like that let me hear from you I hope you leave your post fight comments here in the comment section to this video let me also say the fight that got my go and you all know I'm old school was the uh, Calic Verdian um, the Khabib versus Jesse Vargas fight Khabib comes in with the belt I have no idea how he could throw more punches land more punches at a higher percentage and somehow lose his title that's not the way we used to do things in boxing I'll give HBO credit Harold Letterman had Khabib winning the fight right I mean even HBO understood that he won the fight but at a minimum at a minimum he shouldn't have lost the fight how did he lose the fight hitting Jesse Vargas in the head more than a hundred times I know he's getting hit to the body but folks he's the belt holder you have to beat the champ to take his title if the champs landing punches at a higher percentage than you are and throwing punches you know more punches than you are and if you haven't done something to make it anything other than a photo finish and here I thought could be won the fight then to me I I didn't understand the entire dynamic at the end of the 12th round you know I was with a Jesse Vargas fan and even he conceded that Vargas lost the fight Vargas of course acts like he won the fight then I'm shocked they actually gave the unanimous decision to Vargas. Let me hear from you on that fight. Do you believe Jesse Vargas did enough to take Alec Verdiev's title? Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.